So we are here with uh, Rob Miller, Aaron Barker, and Matt Decker, who have been working on a uh, pulse jet project. If you're unfamiliar with what a pulse jet is, um, I think Wikipedia and Google is probably the best bet. Uh, so anyways, about two years ago, Rob, you uh, started making the pulse jet. Yep. It was just on a whim, kind yep. of for fun, right? Yep. Rocket scientist always wanted a rocket. This was the next best thing. All right, all right. <laughs> so you guys had mentioned that this yep. kind of has its roots in the first like jet engines and rockets meeting like actual use. It was the was it the V1? Yeah, yep, yeah. So the buzz bombs that the Germans used in the Pinwunder group way back. It was very really very basic technology then. Excellent. Yeah. So this, this is, is fun. this is kind of the next generation. There's no moving parts in this engine. Right, that was the thing that attracted me to it. It's like it's really, really simple once you get it running. Okay, so you're telling me, according to, to everyone here on this dock, <laughs> this is going to make an incredibly amount of noise, and there's no moving parts. It's just solid, solid it's, metal. It's an open tube. You can literally run water or air through it. There's no valves. Um, once it's running, the only control is the amount of gas that goes in. Awesome. Now, you kind of stepped aside recently, and Matt and Aaron, you kind of picked up the pieces and because it didn't really fire quite right about a Correct. year ago. Correct. So it, would, you, uh, it would make some pops every now and then, but we never got it to run at frequency and run under its own power. Okay. And that finally happened today. Finally happened today. Yes. <laughs> in the nice, quiet, industrial neighborhood in Burnsville. <laughs> we woke up every duck within about five miles. Yep, we won't have <laughs> raccoons around here anymore. <laughs> All right, and then you're kind, kind of, of the, the, the man in charge of fuel. So uh, how much fuel the jet's getting, um, like the awesome backwoods contraption. <laughs> yes, we, we have a little bit of cobbled together stuff here, but... That's the uh, best kind, right? <laughs> hey, if it makes it work, that's what counts, right? Yeah. We're learning, right? Yeah. That was the whole point of this process was to get some stuff that works. And a couple of things that are not working, and now we're getting it to work better. So our initial test runs, we uh, decided we'd probably overfueling it. As you are probably aware, you were the one standing at the end smelling all the gas. Yeah, we'll have a, if you are watching this video, um, I might be splicing in some stuff right now. All right, <laughs> back to you guys. Um, should we try firing this up? Yeah, let's, yeah, do it. let's do it. The EAC Pulse Jet Project. Okay, Wait, are we, should we start here? Yeah, I got, I'm ticking over here. There's fuel flowing. Yeah. It's a lot of gas. Yeah. Okay, I think. In case you're missing this, this flame is epic. <laughs> so, just blow it back this way. Nope. Sorry. It's still pretty epic. Uh, this thing was screaming, nobody was around it, uh, it went quite well. Now, did you guys want to take a second and maybe explain quickly how a pulse jet works? <laughs> I don't think we actually know. <laughs> Alright, how you think a pulse jet works, maybe we should go with that. So basically what happens is, there's a mass of fuel and air down inside of the cone, and um, that's ignited, it actually acts like a, like a wave front of gas, so it, it burns and it makes its way out both the inlet and the exhaust port, like the big tube and the small tube. They get out, the, so what happens is the wave front actually makes its way out the, the inlet and the, and the exhaust at the same time. 
and it literally pops off the end, kind of like a bubble off the end of a and that create when that pops, it actually creates a pressure wave back into the chamber at the same time. And when it does, so what happens is it blows air out and it on the exhaust stroke, if you will, and then it sucks air back in, and that wave of pressure gets back to the inside and it reignites and then it pops out and it pops back in, and so you have this resonance that goes on between air and gas coming in, igniting, and popping out both ends of the tubes at the same time. And that's all happening in just a fraction of a second. Yeah, it runs at like, you know, 400, 500, 600 hertz. It depends on the size of the tubes, right? So it's kind of like a, a gas-powered pipe organ, <laughs> right? And so once you get it running and resonating, it runs at that frequency, right, based on the size of the shape of everything that's here. That's basically it. So it's really, really simple. If you would look inside of it, there's there's no moving parts. It's open tubes. And then uh, what's what's the next step? Once this is like uh, repeatable and you can do it all the time, are we going to make something that's uh, you know self-contained that you can put on wheels and uh, fire down the parking lot? Possibly <laughs> is that is that in the books? Potentially. Yeah, I'm telling what it'll turn into. Maybe it's a Barbie doll rocket car. That would be sweet. Barbie doll, send it to the moon. <laughs> All right, thanks guys.